Certainly I uh, had wanted to be a physiotherapist for some time and in fact I didn't get in straight from school. I had to, um, I had to go back and do a couple of subjects again at night. Uh, I enjoyed the prax more than anything else and I found these very useful, very useful. My hands, I always enjoyed working with my hands, particularly with people if I can. Indeed, it was a very important part of, uh, of the journey. So in my final year of high school, um, a priest from the Society of the Divine Word returned to Australia after 30 years in India. So he was, he was an Australian, came back to Australia to be the provincial and the central house of the SVD, the initials of the Society of the Divine Word, was quite close to our school. So he came across to be chaplain at our school, so I met him in my final year of high school. So he offered uh, each year to take a group of young men back to various places in India where he lived and worked with the SVD. And I met all sorts of really interesting people during that time. It was a very sight, sound, smells that was so different to anything that I had ever come across in Australia. I was uh, just overcome with this whole experience. Uh, we were participating in a, a liturgy of the Eucharist for the first vows of about 10 young Indian women and they were taking vows in the Missionaries of Charity, which uh, you might know is the order that was founded by who we know as Mother Teresa. Uh, at the end of that Mass, uh, Father Horsfall chose three of us to follow him into the sacristy and he introduced us to this very small woman uh, who was Mother Teresa and all of us were university students uh, but we were struck dumb we had we had just nothing to say it was like it was like meeting a rock star really seeing this woman this legend uh before us and she said things like um, you know do you love jesus yes mother yes 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 uh, would you do anything for jesus oh yes mother yes 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 right then i would have done anything for her i think as well as jesus but it was a wonderful meeting wonderful indeed I think like most people, I struggled uh, in a big way to leave my first culture. Um, I didn't join the seminary till I was 25 and then I went to Mexico when I was 28. So, you know, I was a big boy, but to leave everything that I knew uh, here in Australia, to, to go to another country as a seminarian, um, I found the wrench enormously difficult. Uh, but once I got there, it was great. It was just a huge adventure, it was something new and then to become a part of it, to actually be in it. So I wasn't a visitor anymore. This was actually where I was to stay. The first time for two years as a seminarian, and then after my start finishing theology and um, taking final vows and being ordained a priest in Australia, I then uh, went back there for another five years and would have stayed longer, but uh, the province here in Australia was very keen for me to return and work in our seminary. I looked for that job. I was in the seminary and I uh, had returned from those two years in Mexico. So I was looking for a way to continue uh, to work as a physiotherapist, at least part time, uh, which also brought some finance into the seminary. Um, but I wanted to do something that was a little more with the poor because uh, that was really, since I was a teenager, that's been interesting for me to be with people who are marginalised. So I did approach some people and they managed to get me a role there. Uh, as a physiotherapist in the prison. So I was on a staff there of people, but what surprised me and probably shocked me uh, was I, I'd, I'd done a lot of work as a physiotherapist um, with a variety of people, but I had rarely treated so many violence-related injuries. Uh, and nevertheless, I did get to, um, as you do when you touch people, um, uh, in a healing way, people do tend to start opening up about their lives. So it was a great privilege for me in the end, even though I was kind of shocked by the levels of violence that I was encountering or the results of the violence that I was encountering. Definitely changed me. Yeah. I had um, more recently finished the role of running those sabbatical courses and uh, the Superior General had asked me to work in the area of interculturality full-time and I'd been, I started that full-time 18 months ago. Um, 
and the work that I was doing was morphing into all sorts of spaces. I was beginning to facilitate general leadership teams of men and women who inevitably are from different countries. Um, and also giving particular input and workshops on the area of interculturality. So when this request came that I go down to the Vatican for an interview with a particular cardinal, uh, I wondered perhaps if they were going to ask me to do some work with the bishops around interculturality. Um, I was wrong. Uh, that's not what they asked me at all. But the cardinal um, was very good at um, just moving aside any protestations that I might have that I was not the right uh, man for this sort of role. And uh, he seemed to have other ideas uh, about uh, my future. So yes, I was surprised. My expectations are not high apart from learning, like I'm here to learn now. Um, and as I said, I've already met so many good people who are willing to teach, to show. Um, a few times I'm having to say, uh, because there's a lot of assumed knowledge in any culture, and I'm having to say, well, can we take a few steps back? Because I don't actually know what that is, what you're talking about there. So can we just step back? And people are, are very generous and able to respond. So these first few months, I think, will just be about me um, learning what the role may be and what I can add to the role. Uh, there'll be lots of visiting, inevitably. I think there's, there's quite a few um, parishes uh, to which I will be going to assist with confirmations, for example. Um, I don't think I've been to a confirmation service since mine. So someone's going to have to show me what to do. And I'm sure there'll be people there who'll show me what to do, what to wear, when to put on that hat, when to take off that hat, uh, stuff like that. Um, I, so it'll just be a lot of learning these months that are approaching me now.